Phone part four. Phone part four. <laughs> you wanna do that? Worst idea yet. Okay. <laughs> um, a lot of people don't realize how fast this is. So uh, I'm gonna give you guys a uh, view from the robot of what this looks like. Don't get sick. It's okay, it's okay. Just just the case is still attached to the robot but not the phone in the case. Works perfectly. So ladies and gentlemen, this week we have the pleasure of being in Dallas, Texas at the Rev Robotics Center. Check out Switchback and the team. No, I think two will do it. We just need, wait, one. I mean, I got you. <laughs> wow. Your arm stays put, mine does not. Yeah. I remember all over Reddit when you first got announced, people were calling your robot a hammer drum. Yes. And uh, I don't believe that's how you refer to your weapon. So no. with, with this lifter beater bar style, what, what do you call this? We've been calling it an articulated, um, articulated drum. drum spinner. Yeah. Sorry, I needed help from the-, the <laughs> From the <audience>. professionals? <laughs> Yeah, our, we, we call it an articulated drum spinner. Um, and the, the main goal, which we play a lot of our fights like a, just a regular drum, but the idea was always every robot has a place they don't want to get hit. And because we can make this, this is so rigid that we can literally hit people high or low that if you armor your robot skirt like a regular against a regular vert, we'll go after the juicy bits that are up top. Um, I don't think you want to get hit up on your your. Plate. No, I really don't. <laughs> and so the idea is to play that game of like, we'll hit you in the place that you don't want to get hit. I don't know that that's how our fights normally play out, but that is what the robot theoretically can do. Now, have you ever tried to practice Matty Vasquez's back slap? I... We have some incredibly awkward videos of like, well, we, we, we tried, to, we did backslap um, Malice in our round of 32 fight. Um, that was actually, yeah. So we did, we do do it. Um, I am not nearly as good of a driver. Actually, um, we do a two driver operation on switchback. So I drive the base and Phil drives the arm and weapon. So it's a little bit of a coordination uh, effort to do those types of moves. So I know everyone is going crazy about when season eight is happening. Are you guys preparing any special surprises for season eight? We have lots of ideas for season eight. We have not yet really cemented what we're changing on Switchback. The reason we did Proving Grounds back in September was to test new weapon motors uh, and some changes, um, software changes as well. And that's kind of where we're at right this second. We haven't really done much since September on Switchback. Uh, and we're just waiting on the call as well. But um, weapon reliability was our Achilles heel in the last season. And so that's where we're putting most of our focus to make sure that we have one of those robots where the weapon never dies. All right. Do you ever just feed one of the FRC robots to this thing? Uh, we have... We have talked about it, but we've never we've never wrecked an FRC robot with switchback. There there are times when I've wanted to though. So today we're out in Dallas, Texas, and we're gonna meet up with the switchback team. But the switchback team is not your average garage built BattleBots team. They are part of Rev Robotics, which is an incredible facility. I'm everything's bigger in Texas, including the robot facilities. <laughs> And uh, could you guys tell me a little bit about Rev and what you do? Sure. So, so um, David and I uh, both are on the Switchback team. Uh, we co-founded Rev um, a little nine, 
plus almost years, 10 years almost ago. 10 years ago. And Rev Robotics is focused on building parts that get used for robots, um, mainly for educational robotics, uh, specifically FIRST Robotics programs, um, the FIRST Tech Challenge, and the FIRST Robotics Competition. Yeah, our goal is to lower that barrier of entry for students around the world to get into STEM, because that's getting into those, those uh, science and uh, technical fields is really how the world's gonna become a better place by getting more kids uh, problem solving and doing that kind of stuff. So we're doing our small part to make it easier for them to get into those programs. That's amazing. And just seeing the huge variety of products you guys offer, you guys could probably build a robot here in like under an hour with all this stuff just at your fingertips. I mean, yeah, that, that we, can, we can do that. I mean, one of, the, one of the tenets of kind of the Rev like building systems, we have two scales, but is that they're really designed for, I mean, they're designed for anybody, but one of the things that's cool about them is they're almost like big Legos, right? So you can take parts, they're on a pitch system, you can bolt things together, you can swap things out, you can change gear ratios really quickly so that if you don't have a machine shop at your disposal, you can still build a robot to compete in these competitions. That's really kind of how we design a lot of the mechanical parts. So yes, speed of building is part of what we do at Rev. So a uh, quick tour of Rev. So this is our operations area, uh, customer service, accounting, uh, sales and then marketing with some others mixed in and so you can see like we've got all the robots all the parts everything because we have to understand the problems that teams are having to make sure that we can solve them so sometimes we have to build stuff for customer service main conference room everything's orange everything is orange it's, it's almost like there's a theme there and then this side is engineering and offices up front. We have mechanical, electrical, software. Um, Rev is big on doing like all the engineering and technical stuff um, in uh, in house. So we don't manufacture stuff here, but we design, program, do all the PCBs and electronics and everything, and then we do a lot of testing here. And this is what the we rev room. Rev room. And this is what we were talking about at uh, at lunch. <laughs> and we've got the uh, curated pop tart assortment, and there's kind of holy wars that go on about which pop tarts are the favorite. Are they dessert or breakfast? Um, you know, are they a calzone? Are they a calzone? No. Toast or not toast? Oh yeah, are they toast or not? This is how you get all the builders here. You just have free chips and drinks and then yeah, I mean, BattleBot builders show up. We're not, we're not Google, but like we try to provide for people. Um, a Ooh. Printing lab. That's a lot of Prusas. Yeah, uh, we're, we're moving most of our stuff over now to, to we're buying bamboos. So I've noticed the Prusas are orange. You have orange filament loaded. I still sensy the theme. There is a, there is a theme. We're, we may not be stylish. We just pick orange. So for this year's um, um, Swerd modules on FRC robots, this is the the trend is to make your own TPU spiky wheels and get you a better coefficient of friction with the carpet. So these bamboos have been pretty much running nonstop for the four in-house FRC teams we have. Okay, this is more fun to drive than Scorpios. Oh, I didn't get that on camera. This is more fun to drive than Scorpios. This is the normal, this is just the normal swerve wheel, standard rubber wheel. And it gets pretty good traction on the thing, but now rub that. Oh my God. <laughs> it's like a cleat, just, I can't even get that to rotate. Yeah. I feel like I'm tearing the carpet. Wow. Cleatsy. We're not tearing the carpet as far as first is concerned. 
<laughs> Don't put that on camera. <laughs> Wow. I think so. It's, it's kind this of a, is, this is the old, the other wheel. This so, is these wheels. Yeah. So you uh, felt burning out, and you were scared yeah. to a stop when you were changing directions. With those wheels, you're not doing that. Either. This when when we, when the kids drive this robot, it looks more like Claw Viper. Like it's got <laughs> almost like a magnet downforce on it because it it does that like stop on a dime, um, stop on a dime kind of move that looks a little like shouldn't this flip over or shouldn't this, <laughs> shouldn't this not work? But um, that's the that's the. I mean, it's kind of the same thing, right? If you think about it, like in BattleBots, there's always that, like, oh, everybody's going to brushless, or everybody's going to yeah. uh, put more magnets on, or everybody's doing like Tegris armor. Like, there's always a, a like a thing that people are reaching for. Swerve was that thing, and now like more than three quarters of FRC teams are running Swerve. And so now the teams that are running Swerve that want to go that next little bit, they are doing this like these high traction TPU tires because they can get from like 1.1 coefficient of friction to like 1.6, which is That's huge. Crate changes your acceleration. And in a game like this, where you're just cycling, if you can accelerate faster, you can get more cycles in the same match. That's really awesome. Is this the new Swerve Drive? This is a Swerve Drive. This is Max Swerve. Max Swerve? Yeah. So, oh, Rev, wow. Max, Rev Max Swerve, and uh, these are Neo Vortex. So, this is a Rev motor, the through hex motor. And it looks like a brushless outrunner. It is a brushless outrunner. It's a custom brushless outrunner that we make. Um, okay, so this little motor changes also the direction yeah. of the wheel. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So this is your. But this powers the wheel. Correct. So yeah. So this That's does direction. This does your rotation, and then this one does your power, your actual drive power. And so then all of these have encoders on them so that you can keep them in synchronous with each other. And so you can rotate all of these at the same time to go in any degree in any direction. That's cool. One, uh, like one orientation to someone and I could be they moving away it. from them, moving to the side from them. And I can literally just keep my weapon pointed at them at, at them all times, at all times. Opponent-oriented control. Opponent-oriented control. Yeah. So it, it, the the difference is it comes with complexity, right? So this is an eight-motor drivetrain that requires individual sensors on every individual um, on every single thing. And so when you talk about most BattleBots having two motors for their drivetrain, right? And if they're censored, they're only censored because they're brushless. Most teams are not running encoders. Most teams are not running a processor. And those are things you need. Um, there's no such thing as like manually mixing <laughs> a, a swerve, swerve drive on an RC controller. So the complexity goes up Quite to a bit. do it. But you also can get some advantage that no one else can do. And so that was surprisingly fun to drive. I, I'm, I'm shocked how much fun that was to drive. <laughs> Let's see if I can get, if I remember the controls. So um, standard controls, um, the gyro on it zeros when you turn it on. So no robot communication. Is this why the frog team has a laptop? Um, I, slightly different, but yes, I mean, the. Uh, Ribot has uh, a bunch of first alumni on it, and they're very <laughs> technologically savvy. So, I mean, this this stuff that we do in FRC where we're monitoring currents and we're monitoring communications is stuff that people who move from the first universe into the BattleBots universe bring some of that to the table. And so you have that with our team. You have that with Ribot. You have that on uh, Bloodsport. You've got that on um, Orbitron. 
Um, you know, a lot of people who have done competition robotics at other scales um, want to put more technology on to give more capability. So if we enable this. You can see I just I push it to the right, it goes to the right. I push it to the left, it goes to the left. I push it forward, it goes forward. I push it at an angle, it just goes in that angle. And then I can rotate on the spot, but then I can also do that combined. So I can just push it at an angle and also rotate. And wow. So if you imagine like keeping circling, you can do some pretty cool like turn on the dime things and we're not scrubbing you know, there's no there's no wheel scrub here because the wheel is actually pivoting like a caster um yeah it's a direct drive so it's a direct drive so you don't have to th this it spins on a dime as efficiently as you could possibly do it because all of these wheels are at a 45 degree angle right now you get your maximum traction at all times That's a lot of empty reels. There's a lot of, lot of, lot of printers. Electronics lab. I feel like you have a lot more resources than the average BattleBots team. I mean, we, we are a robot company first, and then we just build a BattleBot here and <laughs> use the robot company resources to do it. So, um, test fixtures and stuff. Um, so we build a bunch of testers to test products, and so, like when we're doing firmware development on motors and motor controllers that we manufacture, this is a networked device. So when they deploy a new firmware, it'll fire off a, uh, a tester that'll go and then run basically through all the software. So as our software people are working on stuff, literally every time we try to push code, these will start spinning and then they'll do reports. So it's a hardware and loop tester for all the capabilities that we have in our devices. Wow. Do you, do you All right. It's better to sign on the front. Oh, definitely here? on the front. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special giveaway this week. Uh, Switchback does not normally sell their parts, so there are very few broken Switchback parts out there. That is true. But we're about to release one into the wild right now, getting officially autographed by the captain and the team. Yeah. And what fight is this from? This is from um, our Shred It Bro fight during the uh, Golden Bolt tournament. So this was a light duty back armor that we were just trying to keep that drum from hitting and we probably would have been better off without it but uh <laughs> so uh i'm happy to take this uh mistake of a piece and give it to somebody to for two else to enjoy <laughs> so just be careful it's sharp <laughs> yes shredded bro surprised me a lot in this tournament all right you guys are up trust me he he, he got me good <laughs> He got both of us in that in that exact same tournament. Yes. Because everybody was thinking it was going to be the two of us were heading for a show. Yeah. And that and that didn't and happen. We, we both uh we both uh we, <laughs> we both, both left we both left the Golden Bolt sad and not going back to either one of our shops. Yes. <laughs> Should we do a little switchback? Oh yeah. Yeah, you do. So switchback versus Shredder Bro. All right, Builder Blog, so leave a comment. What is your favorite thing about Switchback in the comment section? We will pick out the best answer to receive a genuine piece of Switchback. Okay, robot. you know, I have a shed full of five heavyweights, but somehow it looks like you have more robot parts than me. I have a couple more. Um, I think right now, I mean, now is towards the end of the first season, so we're lower on inventory. Wait, this is low? Yeah. But I'd say at any given moment, we probably have, you know, if you counted every screw in this building as a robot part, I mean, there's several million robot parts in this building. Okay. But, you know, we're at our, we're at our low, low season right now. <laughs> low on robot parts. <laughs> Shipping and receiving um, all the individual stations and then every individual type of rev. That you, could, that you could hope or want for. <laughs> I 
Oh my god. This is I thought I had a lot when I made the cabinet of infinite storage, but this is a uh, Jesus. Yeah. It just keeps going and going and going and going and going. Yeah. I want you to know I put one bag back in the wrong spot. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll catch that eventually. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, you're good. And then this is kind of our shop area. Machine shop. And it's incredibly messy right now because we moved in and then we put equipment where electronics, where electrical hookups are, and now we just did some electrical. So in two months, it'll look totally different. So... You have several robot arenas here. Yes, I do. We can we can go we can go look at the robot arenas. And robot. And robots. Mill. Robot. I find mills and robots usually go together. Yeah. So um, the big one is we have our FRC field. For oh, you even built the driver booth. Yeah. I love all the tire marks. Yeah. Swerve does quite a quite a Man. number on the, uh, and like you can see like where the kids have like, <laughs> clip, like clipped it. Full contact. I I want to just make the joke. Do you even lift, bro? Though so you just did that for weight, right? Yeah. So we want simulate to the rest of the robot exactly. And then that's our starter bot. For this year's game so we when the games come out we design a robot for the games that's built out of rev parts so that teams that have limited resources can build and follow instructions and then the idea is that they can iterate on this robot and then all the most of the parts that are on the robot are reusable so they can take it apart reconfigure it and then just keep using it year over year wow. so you have that has been working on and their actual comp bot is over here. That is some beautiful machine work. All the kits. Yeah. It's design, manufacturing. You gotta, gotta have the uh, Tegris, you know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Are those Tegris gears? Yeah. Those are Tegris gears. Wow. And so the team builds two robots. Um, one as a development platform to learn, and then once they get that one up and running, then we do the other one as a competition robot. And so now, then you then you bring the development one kind of back up, and you can see that one's like rougher around the edges than this one. But because there's programming is such a huge part of first robotics competition, we have an autonomous period. Um, that robot can navigate around the field autonomously. Um, we use the April tags to do like a pose so the robot knows where it is on the field. It automatically moves its shooter. It automatically does pickup and ranges. It's got a whole state machine inside of it for um, indexing the rings. And so we have the programming students working on the one robot while the, while the other one is being tweaked. And then we have generally the drive team who practices driving one and they kind of trade off between programmers and practice driving when we're at this point in the season. It's also orange and black. It is, it is also orange and black. But, you know, remember, remember when everybody's walking around the pits and you're just like, everyone's like, why does Switchback Pit look the way that it does, right? I mean, it's yeah. Just, we're just doing the things that we've done. <laughs> all, all, all the along, time. All along, yeah. Team BBQ. He is correct. Yeah, the, the, 
where the kids need our help the most as mentors is mainly in project management, helping them kind of gather their thoughts and stay on a schedule and get the stuff done because they're just overflowing with creative energy, right? And so we make sure that they're doing things safely. We make sure that they have the tools to execute on what they're imagining. But all of this is straight from their brains into CAD, into manufacturing uh, and assembled. Yeah, we have, we've got a few students on the team that are that are really proficient at Onshape, but the majority of this was done by a, a sophomore in high school. <laughs> yeah. Dallas Robot Combat or Texas Robot Combat uh, headquarters here. So we just freshly painted and are getting this prepped three pound arena. Uh, you did something wrong. This this one's orange and white, but yeah. everything else has been orange and black. Um, it's orange and white, but th the tires will make it black as it goes. Right? That's the... <laughs> it's also really hard to record robots on a black floor. Something a lot of people don't realize. True. So Texas Robot Combat, their stuff lives here. And uh, our next event's in May. Oh, what's the date for your event? May 11th at Rev. We're doing Texas Robot Combat. Um, and there are three pounders, one pounders, and uh, plastic, well, plastic ants too. Well, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to come fight some bots here in Texas, Somehow we have walked your entire facility. I still haven't seen Switchback. Oh, switchback. Where are you hiding that switchback's thing? Switchback's over here in our Switchback area. We have this shop space divided out, and so this little area over here is our Switchback lab. And we have two of the four intact Switchbacks in the building, and two of them are on tour. So... Uh, this is switchback as it sits from the last proving grounds that we did back in September, which is pretty much the way it was for the last season, but we upgraded our weapon motors to new motors and remachined a lot of the weapon box to try that out. <laughs>